I hope everyone's well. I hope you guys are having a great week. So in this video, we're going to be finishing up this rose painting. And if you just stumbled across this video on YouTube, make sure you check out the first part, which I'm linking down below. Within that video, I went over all the preliminary stuff like the initial grid drawing, color mixing, and general airbrush painting tips. The first thing I'm doing today is adding on a layer of frisket film right over my initial painting. So this painting has been drying for about three or four hours, not that long. And I don't mind putting frisket right over the top of it because frisket doesn't have much tack to it. So when I peel this off eventually over the painted area, I'm not worried about the paint actually peeling up with it. If you're using an acrylic paint like I'm using, I recommend waiting at least a half hour to an hour before placing it over the top. From here, what you want to do is take a new sharp X-Acto blade and lightly cut out all along the outer contours. The nice thing about frisket is that since it's transparent, I can see my line drawings right underneath. One thing I just want to point out is just try not to press too hard on the X-Acto blade because you don't want to dig too deep into that canvas. Frisk gets very thin, it's made to be cut into, so just don't use too much pressure. The purpose of the frisket film is to give us a very sharp outline along the outside of this painting. That's going to be really important because this part of the painting is in focus. We want the edges sharp. In my airbrush right now, I have the color that we mixed last week. And what I'm going to do is just start on the left side and paint one petal at a time like we did last time. And I'm just going to work my way around clockwise. If we pretend that this rose is a clock, we're going to start with this petal at 9 o'clock and start working our way up. Of course, while I'm painting this, I'm always looking at my reference. And what I'm trying to think about is think of where I see the shadows that the petal in front is casting on the one below. So what do I mean by that? If you look at this petal on the right, this one I haven't painted in yet, we can see that on the reference photo, it's casting a shadow on this petal off to the left of it. I'm basically using my shield to paint the shadow underneath each petal. Once that shadow is placed in, we have a sharp line, so that's going to define the petal in front of it. As I talked about in last week's video, I'm trying not to think of this as a rose while I'm painting. I'm just looking at my reference and trying to decide and see where I see areas of dark and where I see areas of light. And then more importantly, what is that transition between them? Is it a sharp line or is it a very smooth transition, a gradient from dark to light? So on this one petal here, I see two things. I see a very sharp transition where the shadow starts right here. And the rest of the petal is a very smooth transition, a gradient from one value to another. When I want anything painted in softly, I'm just going to paint it in freehand, let the airbrush do the work for me. And when I want something sharp, that's when I'm going to use my shield. The nice thing about that frisket is we're not going to have to worry about sharp lines on the outside because that frisket is going to take care of it for us. So we're just going to be using our shield for the inner parts of all these petals. Just like the last petal I painted, I want to start by adding in the deep shadow off to the right of this petal. To get the sharp line, of course, I'm going to use the shield. And then from there, I'm just going to switch over to freehand to get the soft transitions within the petal itself. As I'm working my way up and around this rose, you're going to see that I'm just spraying some of this color over a lot of the blank areas because I want to get rid of that white blank canvas so I have something there. What makes this one so forgiving is we're really only using that one color for the entire rose itself. Of course, we're going to use some black for the deep shadows, but that one color is going to work fine. So you don't really have to worry about overspray if it gets on a different petal because you're going to be painting that next anyway. Just remember that the colors we're using here are 100% transparent. So that means when we want those darker values, we're going to have to spray more paint. So this is one of the reasons that I lay a thin layer of this paint down first to work into. That way I have something there to see how much darker I need to go. Because when you're using a transparent paint, there's no real quick way to get to a dark color. You have to build it up in layers. So it's a good idea to spray some paint, let it dry for a few minutes, see what it looks like, and then spray some more. This looks like I'm doing it really fast, but um, I'm not. This is sped up. This whole painting probably took me about five hours to do, which is kind of a long time for a simple painting. It's just so important to not rush and to take your time. I know I say that in every video, but it's really one of the most important things in painting. So let's move along to this next petal. And the way I'm doing this, just like before, is I'm using my shield to spray the shadow, which is on the petal underneath. When you're using any sort of shield to paint, you'll learn pretty quickly that it's never going to fit the curve perfectly. So what I like to do is just try to fit it as close as I can and spray what part of it I need to. And then I could adjust the shield and spray some more. So 
Basically, you can get a, a shield to fit any curve you want as long as you don't try to spray the entire curve in one shot. So you'll see that as I'm painting in more and more of these curves, I just spray a small amount and then I move the shield and then I spray some more. On this petal, which is folding away toward us, we can see here that my shield fits this curve pretty well, but I'm still adjusting it slightly as I turn and round off toward the bottom. And of course, once I have those sharp lines in, then I switch over to freehand and paint in those soft transitions and gradients on the petal. Let me show you another example of using a shield on this small petal up here. It doesn't matter what type of shield you're using. I'm using this one called the Pharaoh made by Art Tool. And you can see I'm just kind of moving around to find something to fit one part of this curve. Once I have the first part sprayed in, I switch to another part of the shield and then lightly spray the edge of that. And as I continue down, I'm just constantly moving it and switching it so I get the shape I want. And this will be exactly the same if you cut out your own shields, you know, using an X-Acto blade. No curve is going to fit perfectly. It's all about adjusting it while you're spraying, just spraying a small section at a time. And when I spray this next petal, which is underneath that one, you can see I'm not worried about any overspray on the petal we just painted because it's the same color. It's not going to affect it. I see a small cast shadow here, so I'm using my shield for the left side of it just to define that edge. And then I'm going to spray the rest of it in freehand, just getting this as dark as I can with this one color. I'm eventually going to switch over to black to really darken it up later. But just for now, I have it mapped in knowing that I'm going to darken it up when I need to. So from here, I'm going to speed up the video because I don't need to explain every single petal. It's really that same process over and over. One thing I like to do while I'm painting is never jump around from one side, you know, like from the left side of the painting all the way to the right. I like to use the area I just painted to help guide me to the next part. So that's why I'm working all the way around clockwise, starting from the left. And once one petal's in, I know that I could paint the next one using those values that I see on the previous one to help guide me. And for this whole area with the frisket on, I'm not using any erasing techniques yet. That's going to come up later. I'm just controlling my values by how much paint I apply to the canvas. This color mixture that we mixed last week is pretty forgiving. It's very hard to spray this too dark just because it's a pretty light, transparent color. So after we have all these values in, we basically have subtle highlights and mid-tones mapped in. We're going to have to switch over to add in those deeper, darker shadows and cast shadows, and of course, brighter highlights and specular highlights. While the frisk is still on, I'm going to start by spraying in some of the darker shadows along the outer parts of this rose. And for that, I'm going to be using the color black, which is diluted about 10% with some distilled water. So with this petal on the lower right hand side of the screen, you can see that I'm just spraying a small amount of black down there, just very lightly. And I'm mainly spraying it on the outside of the frisket, just to let some of that overspray hit the, the petal itself. I want to get this frisket off the painting as soon as possible, just because it's hard to see the values when it's on. So what I'm going to do now is just go all the way around the outside here, just looking for where dark shadows are along the outer parts, along the outer contours of the rows. Besides the one on the bottom, I see three on the top here. So I'm just lightly spraying those in. Just a small amount of black paint there. The black paint is very strong, so you don't want to spray too much. And uh, once those are in, we can get the frisket off and start pulling this painting together. Since I already have that black paint in my airbrush, I'm going to start painting in these deep, dark cast shadows first. This process is just like painting the petals before with the red. The dark side on this shadow is off to the right, so I'm using my shield to fit it in along these curves on the right side and just trying to get that area as dark as possible. The other side of the shadow is a gradient. You can see as it goes off toward the left of the painting, it gets lighter. So I just use uh, the airbrush freehand there and try to spray less paint toward the left as that black transitions over to the red. For this curve underneath, you can see that I'm basically spraying with half of the paint hitting the painting and the other half hitting the shield. This is just because black paint is very strong. A lot of people don't like to use it because it's pretty unforgiving. Just try not to pull too far back on your trigger. Just lightly glaze and dust that color on and see what it looks like. Again, what I like to do is spray more of the paint on my shield, maybe half on the shield and half on the painting. This way the overspray is doing a lot of the work. So we're not getting too much of that black paint onto the red. I want to point out that this painting is of course based on a photograph. So if you were looking at a rose like this in nature, you're rarely going to see shadows this dark. The original photo was edited in Adobe Lightroom and I slid the contrast slider up pretty high, 
which makes those dark values look almost pure black. So again, while I'm painting this, I think the best color to use for this is black. Of course, dilute it with some distilled water and just be careful when you're using it. If too much of the black overspray gets on the red, it's going to kind of gray it out because black is, is basically a gray color anyway, and it's a cooler tone. So if you mix a cooler tone with a warm tone, you're going to get gray. So again, just try to keep it in those dark areas and don't let too much of that overspray get on other parts of the rose. Once we have those shadows laid in, let's switch over to an eraser to pull out some highlights. Now here, I'm going to show you a trick that I like to use to get sharp edges along the outside of your highlights. I want the edge of this petal raised out to look like it's folding away from the flower, catching some light. So I'm starting with the eraser to just kind of lay it in. Along the outside edge of it, I'm just taking a piece of ripped copy paper and I'm using this like I would a shield with the airbrush, but instead of spraying paint over it, I'm erasing along the edge. This effect is pretty subtle, but you'll see that as I pull the paper away, the edge that was erased out kind of has a subtle texture to it and it looks like a more organic edge. I don't use this technique that often, but if you're having trouble using your eraser freehand, give this a shot because it may help you out. From here, let's work our way up counterclockwise just along the center part of this rose, pulling out highlights on the outside of each petal. Of course, in the center, these petals are really close together, and as they grow out, they're moving farther away from that center, from the core of the rose, and are being exposed to more light, catching more light. So all that means for us is with that eraser, try to pull out some highlights along the outer parts of each one of these petals. Again, don't just try to make it up. Look at the reference, look at my completed painting on the left side of the screen, and just try to copy what you see. When you're erasing out paint, there's no correct or right way to do it. You could do it any way that feels most comfortable to you. If you'd like, you could erase out in small circular motions or you could use hatching motions. I use a combination of both and at times you'll see me just erasing left and right and up and down. Again, it doesn't matter. Just try to pull out the paint to make an area lighter. I just want to point out and remind you that techniques are not rules. Make sure that you experiment with different techniques to find the one that's most comfortable for your painting style. Moving along to this petal toward the left of the rose, the center of it has a lot of light hitting it, making it almost look translucent. The way that I'm erasing out the highlights here is from a drawing technique called hatching. And what hatching is, is a bunch of parallel lines together that's gonna form one massive value. Generally for drawing, hatching is used for shading in darker values. You'll add more lines closer together to get a darker value. And then you could even add in some perpendicular lines, which is called cross hatching which will also darken the value. We're doing the same technique here, except we're reversing it. We're using these hatching lines for highlights. And the overall goal of this technique is to add in a value easily and quickly. Up close, this looks like a bunch of lines together, but as you look at this from a distance, if you look at my completed painting on the left, you don't even notice it. It all kind of blends together. Also, we're gonna glaze a color on top of this and it's gonna help hide it even further. Using that same hatching technique, I'm just gonna add some more of these highlights on these petals, which are at the bottom of the rose. Also, while I'm doing this, this is gonna add some subtle texture to it as well. This petal starts out thin, gets wider toward the middle, and then thins out again. So I'm just doing the same thing with my hatching techniques. As the petal gets wider, I just make my lines longer. I am trying to follow the curve of each one of the petals. So you'll see that I'm not drawing these perfectly straight. I'm kind of curving them so they, it almost looks like the, the petal is curving out and then going down into that shadow toward the center of the rose. You could add as many of these as you'd like. Just look at that reference and decide what you need to add. From here, what we're gonna do is switch over to Scarlet. And just like in last week's video, I'm using this directly from the bottle. I haven't diluted it at all. I'm gonna use my airbrush freehand for this and I'm gonna work my way all around it, just lightly glazing this layer over the top. This is gonna help soften up and knock down some of those highlighted areas to make them look softer and more natural. And this is exactly what we did in the center of the rose from last week's video. This color Scarlet is pretty forgiving just because it doesn't get too dark. You really have to spray a lot of it to get a dark value in. So you don't really even have to worry about overspray. Just kind of lightly spray this over the whole rose. And if there's any areas you need to darken, try spraying a bit more of this to see if it helps you out. The last part here is the stem and the leaves. So what I'm doing here is using some 3M vinyl tape just to map in the outlines of the stem. And because this tape is so narrow, I always use some masking tape along the outside of it 
this kind of creates a dam so that when I spray in with my airbrush in here, we're not going to get overspray outside of that tape. The color that I'm using here is up on the screen now. It's a mixture of moss green and scarlet. Just like for the rose, we're doing the same thing. But this time it's reversed. We're using that scarlet to desaturate the green. I wanted the highlight to be on the left side of the stem, so all I did was spray more paint toward the right. Very easy to do. You could do this in about a minute or so. For each of the leaves, I want to do the same thing like we did for the rose. I want these very sharp, so I'm going to use frisket here and then cut out the outer contours. I'm going to use the same color mixture of green that I used for the stem, which is 10 parts moss green to one part scarlet, and then spray in this whole rose. You can see I'm adding a little bit more paint at the bottom and the top, and then of course switching to an eraser to pull out that thin stem in the middle. If you want to add some texture to the outer contours of the leaf, you could do what I'm doing here. I'm just using an electric eraser and tapping this in along the outer contours. This is just going to help break up the edge of the leaf. You don't have to do this. You could see that I only did it on two leaves and I didn't even finish the whole thing, but it's just a technique I wanted to show you if you're interested in doing this. Using Frisket, I'm going to apply the same techniques for the leaves on the left side of the screen. First start by spraying in that green a little bit darker toward the bottom and to the right of these leaves, and then switch back over to the ink eraser to pull out some highlights, especially that thin stem that goes right across each one of these leaves. So with that, we're going to call this painting complete right here. I really hope you enjoyed this painting lesson, and if you give this one a shot, let me know down in the comments how it worked out for you. Of course, this is a small YouTube channel, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them right down below in the comments comment section. I hope all of you have a great week. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back here next time.